Well, we can have a chat now with a man who's back at the coalface after starring at the World Cup. Wales and Saracen Centre, Nick Tompkins, joins us. How are you, mate? Yeah, not bad. Pretty stiff, pretty sore, but you know, like you said, at the coalface. Don't talk to me about being stiff and sore. I used to <laughs> laugh your head off. You don't what know you the meaning of it. About? You never trade through the week either. Exactly, because I was stiff and sore, Nick, so you know exactly how it is. Yeah. I know. Mate, so you're back at it now, right? As in, we're talking about the World Cup still, so we were talking about the final just being played. Does it feel like a lifetime ago that you're at the World Cup? Yeah, it doesn't, like, honestly, I was watching the final. It just doesn't feel like I was, I was there or involved, mate. It's, um, it's a weird one, and it's, for me, it was so quick, straight after the quarterfinals, straight in, uh, back and, and playing. So it was, it was, there was no really time to process it or anything like that. So they didn't even give you a week off, Saracens. You came back straight in. Yeah, I came back straight. In. Honestly, I, just, I got the I got the text after the in the changing room, and uh, all the boys were just pissing themselves laughing because they were two weeks off, week off, and I was like, "No, no, yeah, back home uh, against Bath." Uh, it was it, high, it, hey, it was high, highly paid. He's like the Finn Russell of Saracens. That's highly paid. Like, <laughs> straight in. I know you know that's not the truth when you're playing alongside Maratoje. Uh, well, the funny thing is, you should have chosen England then, because obviously you chose Wales. You could have chosen England, but they're the the things that you have to take when you play for Wales, right? All these, all these what ifs, mate. Hey, well, I, look, I didn't get picked, so you know, there's only <laughs> one enough. choice for me. Fair enough. Uh, how was it then? Obviously, you know, it, it looked like an amazing World Cup from the outside. A lot of people were writing Wales off beforehand. Gats, you know, new into the job again from January. Tough Six Nations, but. My God, what a turnaround. And it started with those warm-up games. And you then get to a quarter-final and the performances, obviously, in the group stages were phenomenal. But how much does it hurt even more knowing that you probably should have won that quarter-final after performing way better than anyone else thought you could at the World Cup? Yeah, I, I, well, it, it, like you said, it started off with the, the, with the warm-up games. But for, for us, it started off way before that. And I think that's what... Um, Gats did so well for me. Um, looking back at it, is just he got all the boys in early and just no made, made no excuse about it. Like you're gonna have to work hard. You're gonna just have to get down and get with it and, and just and just get grind through it. And like it's, it's you can't really get away from it to be honest. Once you get that work in, you're with the boys and you're with them for so long. You start forming quite a tight bond and you start getting to know them way more. And he mentioned one thing. He mentioned that it was like a club feeling, and I think that's what he did so well. And then. You know, fast forward it a little bit. We're doing well in the in the group stages, and you've you've got such confidence, and you're going into this quarter final, not expecting to win, but we didn't want to go home. And mate, it was it was tough. It was a really really tough moment because you never at no point did I think we're out of this. We could we, we always thought we still got this, and then probably the last two minutes, and you just gutted like, and, and then and then it's all over, and you're just looking around, and what two days later you're saying goodbye to each other, and that's it. It's it's brutal to be fair. It's it's brutal. Yeah, it's pretty ruthless, especially after that game against Australia where you lads were so good. That felt like a big turning point for you as a national team. It, like Even forward now, like you think of the confidence that would give you. And Nick, I wanted to ask you about Warren Gatland. Like We've worked together at Saracens. We've had some of the best coaches. You've had have some of the best coaches in the world there. What's different about Gats to like a Pivac or the coaches that you've had at Saracens? Because he's obviously one of the greatest as well in the world as a coach. Yeah, like it, at first I wasn't obviously I didn't I didn't really get I didn't know him and, and I didn't really know too much of the Six Nations and but then you I really got a flavour of the of the man when you when you're doing these tough tough like tours to to Switzerland and he's really put it in and what was I think the best thing about him is he gave all of those boys such confidence in obviously working us so hard but gave us the confidence to know that we were fit enough and that we'd done the hard yards and he really built that kind of belief in you and and, and he was it was actually quite incredible what he does and in that way like man managing and, and giving you that confidence and I think that was what I thought was special about him to the other coaches I've had what he did for that group um was quite special because I think he could and it made me realize I probably could have done it with any group you know taking any any kind of group and and put them through it and then and give them and then have the confidence afterwards and, and he just stripped it right back and he said look he said all of our games, we're aiming to keep the ball on the pitch the longest and we want to put the boys through, we want to put them through hell. Obviously, it's going to be terrible for you, but he said, look, we want to aim for the most most time on, on the ball on the pitch and and that's what we did and, mate, it was horrible. Uh, I didn't like it too much, but it, it, it did a good job. It did. Jim, you mentioned all the coaches then, the Saracens coaches, Gats, 
and all the brilliant coaches that Nick's had. What what about the Dragons ones that you had when you were there for a year? Did, did you get a mention, Naz? <laughs> No, no, yeah, yeah, they get a slight mention, you know, they're, 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 they're there about. <laughs> Good lads, good lads. I still get stick to this day, honestly, about how bad my rig was and and how bad I was for how long I was there for. So it's brilliant that every every time my rig gets challenged on it. So I know, Goody, you might have, you've got the same issues, you know, everyone's commenting. Oh, mate, honestly, I I, does as well for different reasons. I reckon I was worse, man. Yeah, it wasn't. Oh, mate, I've not even I've never looked at you and thought he needs to sort his rig out. I've looked at you and thought never. this kid this kid can break tackles like no one else. He might only be short, but my god he can break tackles. Worm, I didn't even know the rig rat. was a thing. No, when it was at the Dragons after COVID, mate, I was uh, <laughs> they told me to pile on the pound, so I got to about hundred kegs and mate, I was I was hanging. I wasn't great. Oh gosh. Did you even get the ball at uh, drag? Did it ever come outside nine or not? Or was it just like <laughs> just kick, well, kick just- the ball? I had I had Doc on the inside, so he wanted to he wanted to carry all the time, so I was just letting I was like, Yeah, you can ja- Oh yeah. <laughs> Jamie Roberts was there. Jamie Roberts at, about, yeah. at, at, at the end of life, wasn't he? He was at the end of life there as well. Uh, I he did I tell you what, he did a job and he was I will say this, not because I not because I like him, but he was um, he did a job for he, what he was good at and he and I think he actually played quite well. What are the Welsh lads like, Nick? You've been in the England setup. You're at a very English club, Saracens. England heavy. I know there's been in kind of a few South Africans and Scotland legends in the mix as well there over the recent years. As he blinks, <laughs> you're talking about Sean Mayer. There was there was <laughs> Kelly Brown, Sean Mayer, Kelly Brown, Mayland. yeah, Duncan Sean Taylor, Mayland. Duncan Taylor, yeah, yeah. There was a vice captain in there as well. But Nick, what's the differences <laughs> like there? I know. I know, I can't, I'm that vulnerable today. Talking to Vice Captain, I just said to Nick actually before, I was out with Jacques Berger last night, one of the hardest players to have ever done it. He's getting a new knee next year and he's only, I think, I think he said to me, he's only 29. He looks about 63. But Nick, just being in that Welsh environment, like give us an idea of what it's like. They're quite quiet, aren't they? Like a quiet bunch, a bit enjoy each other's company. They don't like being away from home. Yeah, they don't like being away from home. They don't want to move too far away from home. But uh, quiet, I wouldn't give them that. Like um, they're... All of them are such lively lads and they will rip into you whenever they get the chance. Of course, you you can imagine what I get stick for hairline and other things like that. But, mate, that like, and that was another thing. Like, we had committees set up. We had a joke of the day, thought of the day. And and it was, it was, it was pretty, it was pretty brutal. But it was, it was, there was some really funny times. And I really, I actually really missed that group. It was a really, really good group. And I think we're going to look back at later down the line. And I think, I think we realise Obviously, it wasn't didn't go how we were, but like it was such a good time and an enjoyable process throughout all of it. Who's getting hammered the most in there then? Um, I can imagine Lewis Rees Summit is getting quite a bit. No, wait. Well, yeah, he does a little bit, but we, we steer away from. It's it's hard when you have got for Tom Tom Francis on the on the team, you know, Franny. <laughs> so yeah. like he got honestly, mate, he got hammered every day, and it's so hilarious. Imagine uh, being called Franny. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> big dude. Lose the R. He, he's such a nice boy, but oh, he gets abused. It's so funny. Have you guys talked at all about the next four years and looking ahead to Australia at all? Is it is there any plan being put in place around that? None. I've heard like, man, I've I've heard nothing. I've literally off the bus. So what was it three hour drive back training with Sarah's next day, and that's it. It is brutal, that, isn't it's it? It's literally that's, that brutal. That's all. Yeah, that's it. It was. It was like yeah shake hands yeah that was that was awesome cheers and then off you go yeah so as a player then you you, you know you've been through that camp and you said it was hell right at times training yeah. was ridiculously hard you've come through the world cup you've played exceptionally well you get knocked out unfortunately in the quarterfinals in a very tight game next day you fly back you're training with saracens the day after and we talk about player welfare and all this stuff have you got a plan at some point where you can see a bit of downtime because how hard is it mentally for you and I know Saracens had a real sticky first game of the season to then go from the highs of that environment with Wales at the World Cup to then back with Saracens which I know is a great environment but ultimately it's that never-ending treadmill of rugby again isn't it? Yeah I, so in fairness Saracens are going to find they'll find a way to let it down the line um, to give me some time off and, and Martin calls already spoken to me and I trust them completely it's not I, I'm not too worried about that but it is, it is, I, I do look at it and I look at some of these boys, these into that, especially who've been doing it for a while, you know, Owen, Romaro, Jamie George. Like, I honestly don't know how they've done it. It's 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 one game after another and it's never ending. And it, and I, like, even physically it's tough, but mentally it must take a toll because man, I, I've struggled. Uh, luckily, at the same time, 
is kind of I've not been able to dwell on it too much because I've, I've had to just get on with it um, so I haven't really been able to think about it too much but like for, for those boys coming in as well it's going to be I like a fair play to them it's going to be tough because the where they got to and how far they went and how well they did and then obviously for it to not go where they wanted just by a point um, and now they're straight in to a club that we need them you know we, we're obviously we've got we had a, we had a hell of a win at Gloucester but we need to we need some of that um, bolstering back because we, we we need to start winning games. Yeah, well, they're getting paid a lot of money as well, Nick. That's true. Too many games. Do you like? Do you feel as a player? You can say this now. You're an established player. I, I think it's ridiculous the amount of games you need to play. I think it's a great platform for you to talk about it. I think the fact that you come from a World Cup, not just the emotional toll that that has, because you can deal with the emotional side. This is about manning up, but the physical. The physical part of the game. I just think there's too many games. You feel that or not? I mean, you, the season's not even start. I mean, you th- what are you in now for Saracens? Th- th- three three games, games in? in now. Three yeah. games in. My goodness me, you're not even factoring in the Champions Cup as well. And then you've got the Six Nations yeah. happening. I know there's a, there's nothing happening in November, and then it's just it's ridiculous. Do you feel there's too many games? I think, I I think there's I think it well it's got easier now with ten teams in the league. But I think um, I do think there's too many games. But I also think they're at the wrong time. I don't know why. We have prem games while there's international games going on. Like this doesn't happen in football, and they have it completely right. I don't know why teams that have a lot of international players get get punished, and and then it comes into assist. Like I know you're giving guys get game time from it, and it, and that's great for them. But at the same time, we're now being pushed pretty hard now because we have to get these boys in because we've had, haven't had great results. Because you know we've been we've lost what I think it was like 13 internationals to. Yeah. Two, two starting hookers. Um, so, like, for me, the, I don't know if it's too many games, but I just think, I just feel like, why are we putting these games on when people obviously want to watch the internationals or there's not full strength? I think that, that to me, puts on too much pressure on premiership teams to to then, when they do come back. And you're right, Jim, they get we get paid all right and they get paid a lot of money, so they have to play. Um, so, I, I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm a massive before. I think it should be moved, to be honest, more towards summer. Um, a summer tour um, tournament kind of thing, and, and maybe align it with the rest of the world, and then maybe you get chances to properly rest players. Uh, that's, that's what I would think, and I think that's the best way. But I mean, it, it doesn't happen, does it? Yeah, but mate, you've got a voice as a player, and that's the important thing. I think the big shift now needs to be you lads talking about it, mate. Like, uh, else well, it's not going to change, is it? We're just going to carry on. We'll just roll yeah, well, season after season. I think that. I, look, to be honest, I think that's that's a massive epidemic with rugby. I think we don't really have a union really we don't really have I mean we talk about the RPA and I'm not going to bash the RPA but realistically they're beholden to the RFU and I think we don't really have any voices in, in terms of as players and I think you, a little bit of what I look back at what Wales did in the Six Nations when they when they were calling the strike and even that didn't really go the way some of the boys wanted but it was nice to see a bit of player empowerment and, and a bit of you know we're not going to take this line down I think I think ultimately that's what we need but like it's complicated, isn't it? Because you've got some teams who are struggling at the moment, and, and they need the games. But I, I, don't, I don't know the answer. But I agree with you. I think, I, I think as a as a whole, we need way more of a voice, way more uh, power in what we're saying and how we're saying it. Because at the moment, it just feels like it just gets decided for us, and we just keep rolling with it. Yeah, you need and to Nick, do the George Cruz. To do the George Cruz, go on strike at Christmas. That's what you want to do, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you got a game, Jim. And on Jim, Nick, if there was someone that could be a spokesperson for you, and Jim talks about himself as the vice captain, is he someone that you'd want to lead that? Would you please follow God. him to battle? No, please God, please no. God. Please. <laughs> <laughs> Nick, you didn't see me in my prime. You could, you could be like our token guy on the side. Don't say token. Don't you dare. <laughs> Call me a Adjust token. It. No. I'm a quarter Chinese, mate. That's Jim. fine. <laughs> <laughs> no, Jim, you'd be quite good, mate. You'd speak your mind. Yeah. I think it'd be quite good. No, I, Matt, I think, you know what, Nick? I know we're going down a bit of a not, a, not a rabbit hole. I think we're going down a different way, which we thought. But I think at, at this point, coming out of the World Cup, we were talking about how good the World Cup is and how physical it's been. There needs to be a shift. I know, like Simon Massey-Taylor, there's stuff coming around the corner when they're talking about how things are going to go with the Premiership. But I think aligning the season needs to be the number one thing. Anyway, we won't get into the weeds of it. I'm hanging. I'm not well-read enough over the last few days <laughs> to talk about it. 
let's look at some of the exciting stuff that is coming up on the field. Obviously, you've got the Six Nations coming up in, a, in a few, just a few months' time now, so that's something to look forward to. But also, Saris, you're back at Tottenham to face Quinns. Huge for you guys. Mate, massive. I love playing at Tottenham as well. Obviously, it's like the unbelievable stadium, the facilities. It's nice to see what uh, what the football world, uh, how they live. So I love it every time. Like, And, and it's, usually, it's usually pretty lively as well. Uh, with Queen's brilliant rivalry, um, so like it'll be, it's, I'm properly excited for that one. Why do you guys hate Queen's? Because I know Jim hates Queen's as well. What's, <laughs> what's the? What's the I don't there? hate Queen's. Who told you? No, that? you can say no, it. You got the way around. No, Andre Esterhazen came on and said, "quote unquote," I hate Saracens. That he said it, <laughs> and then they got absolutely smoked. <laughs> then we went and absolutely smashed them. Oh, you know, it's a rival, isn't it? And, and they've got a lot of characters that can can wind you up, and they're funny with it as well. You got. Joe oh no, Marlo. don't send. Oh no, don't you mention Joe Marler on this podcast? Oh, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh, 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 oh remember that. We're That's mentioning so clowns funny. today. Yeah, we're mentioning clowns, so we've got another one. <laughs> hey, look, mate, you put it out there, you might get shot down. You never know. Yeah. Hey, it's okay. Yeah, we'll win there. Exactly, but with that, what is it with uh, with Quinzen? So is is that? It's, I mean, it's almost become a thing now, hasn't it? I think they're envious of the success, like the England setup and stuff like that. Let's really try and sell this stadium out. Let's make like one hundred fifty thousand people <laughs> want these Stop tickets. Getting- just think you're John Fury and you're selling the you're selling the fight here. No, we, it's the, I think it's the characters, and I think they bring they bring a lot of character, don't they? They a lot a lot of individuals that are quite funny, quite uh, quite tasty, can be quite uh, controversial, and I think. Um, we like to think of ourselves more as, I, I don't know, you, we, we try not to be that way as Harry's, don't we? Well, we've got honesty and stuff plastered on our, on our stadium, so you can't mm. be, uh, you can't be too heavy. Really? Yeah, <laughs> I see. Yeah, no, we do. Still after, after all the way down, don't worry. So Quinn's are honest. We're extra honest now. <laughs> extra honest, yeah, put the extra in there. Uh, fair enough, so, fair enough. Yeah, I, I think it's that, and I think, um, I think you get, they, they, they always raise our game when they play us, and, and I think that's, that's one of the biggest things you, you really want to, we don't want to put it to him. Uh, lastly, from me, mate, you loving it? You loving being a baller? You enjoying it, mate? It's awesome watching your career. Like I know we're having Bottle. a bit of a tongue and cheek on here, but it, you, when you play rugby, even as a young lad when I was at Saracens, it looks like you absolutely love it. Like, what's it like? Just give the listeners a bit of energy about what it's like at the top end. Um, mate, it's um, like I just think like that World Cup was was an absolute dream for me. I've never experienced. Um, a country and a, a fan base from everyone who just wanted to say hello to you, wanted to like was waving at you, was shaking your hands, and and they absolutely loved it. And I think it was it was one of those things that I've never done before. And, and rugby, in my, and obviously it was it was going great after the the final. Fuck, that was awesome. Oh, can't swear, but um, that oh, was you can. Um, you can. Oh, okay, yeah, that was unbelievable. I had a hell of a piss up afterwards, and then to have that World Cup, like I, I've I've never experienced anything like that, and and it's like it's mate, it's so addictive. You just want to go again, and and I just want to see how far I can go and keep enjoying myself because um, it goes quick. Believe it or not, Jim, I'm 28 now, nearly 29. So are you really? I had you down as 25. Jeez. No, yeah, yeah I know the, the hairline is deceiving, but it's um, <laughs> it is still I'm 28, and I'm. I feel like I'm an old man, so I'm I'm trying to really eke everything I can. You got to keep yeah. going. There's Lions tour in two years, and Jim tipped you should have been on the last Lions tour. So let's see if Is we get on the next one. Yeah, yeah, you know you saw that. I know everyone was sending yeah. you the messages. And said, oh, look. <laughs> <laughs> you know, right. had you down. Uh, what I do want to know then? Obviously, you're back. You've been back at the club a couple of weeks. This weekend's game, you're playing Leicester at home, and it's quite ironic that the two most Influential teams in the Premiership in terms of players at the World Cup are Saracens and Leicester, and you're playing each other a week after the World Cup final. Any sign of the England boys? Are they back this week, or are they off on holidays to Dubai for a couple of weeks? I know the Leicester no. lads have been given a load of time off. Yeah, they're not they, coming back they, till they, round five. I think they, they. I know they've been given time off, but I think I'm not too sure. But well, I, I reckon we're going to see them all on Tuesday. So they've all said to you on Tuesday. So we'll, we'll be seeing them on Tuesday. I don't know who's going to be starting or whatnot, but I, I think there's going to be a. A, f- a fair amount of the boys playing um, yeah. and getting stuck in. Yeah, Did they say see you to... on Tuesday or see you next Tuesday? I can't work out. No, we'll one. see you on Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I spoke to Dominic, the owner of Saris, and he said that the boys, he said like Owen Farrell especially is mad keen to get back and start shouting to Nick and tell him what to do again. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <you're ready. laughs> can't wait. Get, get the earplugs in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, yeah. I had it from Dan Bigger, didn't I? So, uh, look, I get it. I'm Same. Who's the worst? Same Who's the worst out of them two at shouting at you? 
Oh, Dan Bigger. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I got Dan shouting at me. Oh, well, because it's like it's Dan shouting at you. So, and I, I feel like he wouldn't beat me up, whereas Owen probably would beat me up, you know. But Dan is just like a little puppy dog. Do you ever shout back? God, no. <laughs> I want to I keep my position. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Fair yeah. enough. Yeah. All right, all right, Nick. Hey, thank you so much for coming on the show, mate. Well done at the World Cup and, and best of luck this weekend against Lister. Thank you for having me, boys. Uh, good Cheers, to see mate. you, Jim. Good to see you, mate. Looking good, Come mate. say hello next time. Thank- well, I know mate. you're lying. I know you're lying. Andy, always the best. I, it's, that was more irony for Jim, that was. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, he's so vulnerable. Cheers, lad. Top, Top lad. lad. Yeah, good yeah, lad. Is. I couldn't understand him, though, with his harsh <laughs> Welsh accent. Um, I still can't believe. Was it Eddie Jones that said he was too small for England? Ridiculous. What a mug Eddie Jones is. Man, I'm a mug. massive yeah, fan. Yeah, lovely kid, isn't he? Yeah, mate. Great yeah. player as well. Great player. Fantastic yeah. kid. I was there at Saracens with him when he was coming through. He was brilliant. And it's good to know Faz shouts at everyone else as well, as you, Jim Hamilton. He shouts at Tompkins. He shouts at Hamilton. shouted at Hamilton back in the day. Nothing changes, eh? Nothing changes. Loves his rugby. Loves his code. He's back. Pod, 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 pod. Rugby pod. <laughs>